the I Am A podcast with Loretta and Bianca. Stories, advice and discussions to resource, encourage and support independent music artists. So on this week's podcast, we are talking about touring. Um, It's one of those important things that is so essential to the progression of our careers. So we're going to talk about what touring is, why to tour, when to tour, um, how to schedule a tour. We're going to talk about budgeting and that is like such a big one for us independent artists. How do we tour and not end up really flat broke at the end of it um we're going to touch on touring abroad um and even potentially strategies around sharing your tour with other artists just to lighten the load and um a few words on um, getting on a support tour and merch so sit back and enjoy so touring It's a really important one. You can be in your bedroom and sing in your mirror and you can record all the the most amazing music. And if you don't get out there, it's like you're you're doing music with one arm. It's it's that important. So we're going to talk about that. So what is touring? So touring is getting out there and performing in front of uh, your fans or people who you're hopefully going to convert to be your fans while you are performing. And just like um, Bianca said there, I've been amazed over the years at artists who I've interviewed who have never Mm. toured, who have rarely done any live shows yeah. they've written music they've even um produced music and released it but they've they've not toured and i just think there's so much to gain from the touring experience in terms of what you learn about yourself about your songs um but also it's how you grow it's how you um, meet your fans and gain your fan base and how you Uh, let people know all about you Um, we've spoken before when we spoke about songwriting about the fact that sometimes you can um, write a song and you really think it's going to work a certain way and Mm. it's not until you perform it live that you realize what kind of setting that song would be or or um a song that you think is really strong just doesn't really work yeah, live. translate the same life and, yeah. and the opposite a song that you just thought was just okay everyone loves. goes down so yeah. well live you can't find those out until you perform them live so live performance is so important touring is just taking that out there um far and wide yeah so you know gigging is doing your thing booking some gigs and doing it whenever a gig comes up I suppose or when you've booked it and touring is just simply scheduling a bunch of gigs together maybe in different places and mm-hmm. just and just going for it in a space of like a week two weeks a month some people tour for a year <laughs> however long you want to do that but it's just kind of just going on a whole run outside of live your hometown outside your hometown of um load of um yeah a run of live shows I think it's important to think about when you're ready to tour because, Mm. um, you know, we we talked about live performance and that's so important. We've spoken about starting um, your first live performance is perhaps at something um, safe like an open mic night and something like that. Your your next progression to that might be doing some uh, local events to yourself and ultimately you'll lead that up to a headline show in your hometown because most of your fans are going to be built up again it just shows the importance of live performance but if you do well and keep performing in your local area people will get to know you and they'll come and they'll support you so you can become quite established in your hometown and even quite successful and depending on your hometown depending on your hometown <laughs> yeah but um that's one of the things that is quite a good indication of yeah. when it's time to tour because you you want to make sure you can at least pull in a crowd in your hometown mm. before you venture to somewhere else where people haven't even heard of you before yeah. so that's that's one of the things to look at when it's time to tour um but also of course we're in a digital age where your music can be um, found and discovered far and wide so you may have fans outside of your hometown that you don't even know about and uh, there's ways to find that out Um, Spotify for artists has statistics of which towns and cities are listening to your music and you might actually have a few surprises on there and find Mm. out you've got some fans in North Wales or somewhere you've never been it will be quite surprising and you know if you've got a significant amount of fans in, in a city 
then it's really worth going and putting on a show there. It might not be an obvious city. Mm. Um, so if you're in the UK, you might think the obvious ones are, are London and Manchester and Birmingham, but perhaps you've got loads of fans in Nottingham. Yeah. So it's worth you putting Nottingham as one of your tour dates. So don't just do what you think sounds cool or sounds right. Try and find out uh, where your fans are. Yeah. And of course, you need to book a venue to um, that size. Again, I think when people first think of touring, they think it's going to be some big, fancy, massive arena thing. It's well, not, it's not usually that glamorous. It's, 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 a, it's not that glamorous. B, you're going to be very bankrupt if you try and do that. So, you know, it's still a tour if you are doing a bookshop tour oh, in yeah. different cities and there's a capacity for 15 or 20 people. That is still a tour. And that's potentially 15 or 20 people are going to become true fans and buy into your journey. So. Yeah, and it's just it's just that little by little building on your career um, incrementally, be it um, building on your releases, building on your touring, building on it fan by fan, and um, just reaching people slowly but surely is just the long game that you should have in your mind. So, what we, the small shows that might seem small now are not insignificant. You're just building on your own experience, building on experience of performing in front of people, meeting new people, networking. You're building, you're building your CV at the same time um, of what you can do and what you have done. So that if like some amazing support tool comes up, people know you've done this before. Mm. You know, so there's there, uh, there doesn't seem to be a downside in my mind to getting out and touring specifically um it's not easy um but even if when you're not touring just trying to schedule put gigs even in your down season if you have a down season gigging periodically is also important i just think it's essential i i don't think you can call yourself an artist if you don't tour sometimes mm. if you don't perform I think that's that's part of it you can call yourself a songwriter yeah but to call yourself an artist I, th I think you have to perform and you have to tour and I just think it's such a growing experience you will learn how to engage with different atmospheres depending mm. on different crowds different venues um, how to make your songs translate in a venue where you can hear a pin drop to one where they've got the football playing on a screen yeah. in the background yeah. you know t to learn to cope in those different situations in a live setting when there's when you can't hear yourself or the PA is really rubbish um, all of those things help you to become a better artist mm. to be able to cope with those things because you might be able to form great in your studio at That's home true. when it's in the optimum you know scenario and, and settings but if you can still pull off a great show uh, in a dingy pub doing what um, a friend of mine used to call the toilet gigs yeah. and he used to absolutely um, just swear by that every band has to earn their stripes by doing the toilet gigs which is, is basically the, the the dingy dirty mm. dives um, <laughs> yeah. it's, still, it's willing, still a, willing to do them yeah and it's, it's a it's a bit of a rites of passage I think yeah. to know that you you've done that like if you speak to any um, seasoned artist, I mean, one artist's story who's always inspired me in that way is Ed Sheeran. Mm. And, you know, he's got the whole story of when he d did 100 gigs sofa surf uh, surfing, didn't he? Yeah. Um, and just sometimes there'd be two or three people, but he just got, he was so passionate about getting his music out there and performing in as many places as possible that um, he would do that. It was very, very unglamorous, mm. but he made his fan base that way. Yeah. That's how he got the attention of people. Yeah, that's so good. And uh, do you remember a time when, because I think it's less so now, when, when online sort of live became a thing and people were starting to perform shows live online? Yes. That, that has died. Yeah. Has and I been. think that you have to be in the room Mm. I think that isn't you can absolutely I go on YouTube and I watch live stuff but it doesn't feel the same and there's nothing like being there yeah so you can do that you can and that can might be a good event to have at some point around a release if that's the strategy you want to go for and perform all of your songs and people can at this time I'm going to perform the album live or whatever but I think that that didn't that didn't, didn't take off because it doesn't feel the same there is a bit of a disconnect like mm. in, in watching somebody perform on a screen there's you know that's still a beautiful experience yes. but there isn't anything like, like seeing somebody live and for you as an artist in terms of your voice and your your playing 
to be able to do that in front of an audience again is completely different than just doing it in a sort of controlled um, setting so it's really important there's so many reasons why you should tour it's how you build your fan base Um, it's a great way to sell merchandise that's another good reason to tour Um, people of course can buy things online but often people will come to a tour expecting or wanting to buy some kind of memorabilia so it's another great source of income Um, you can earn money from touring yes to start with you may very often um, make a loss or if you're you're lucky break even but actually it's one of the ways that artists once they're established and they consistently tour actually make money Mm. uh, through touring so there's so many reasons why an artist uh, should tour Um, throughout the podcast today you're going to be hearing clips as well from two artists we spoke to amazing artists Abby Morrow and Alice Watts who um, don't normally work together, but they decided to collaborate for the specific Mm. reason to both tour together. They had a number of reasons why they decided to do that together, but we'll we'll let them tell you and we'll be hearing uh, from them uh, throughout the podcast today. Hi, I'm Abby Morrow. I'm a singer-songwriter and a music leader. Hi, I'm Alice. I'm a singer-songwriter based in London. Well, we, we went on tour together, so we were sitting in a cafe one time. We used to meet up every month or so, was it? Yeah. And just catch up and then just encourage each, each other. And um, we were having a coffee one time, and I think it was you, you said, mm. oh, I've just met this guy who's just organised his own tour. Yeah, he's, uh, he'd organised a world tour, actually. He'd gone all around the world. Um, and I was like, Alice, we can do that. Shall we do it? Um, and maybe not go around the world for now, <laughs> but go around the UK and, and maybe a few other places. Um, and so we were just like, let's do it. Alice was like, yeah. And then that was it. And then we spent the next two months preparing and getting all the merch together and trying to find venues and working our socks off really to make it happen. Yeah. And practicing a lot <laughs> from early days. Um, and we pulled it together. Yeah. So we're going to talk now about scheduling a tour um, because I think that is one of the biggest things and that's probably a biggest barrier. How do I schedule a gig in a place that I've never been to and I don't know anyone there? Tricky one. It is a tricky one. I think, so the first, the basics are, um, I think you can sometimes think a a tour has to be a tour if it's 15 dates Mm. uh, and it really doesn't. A tour could be four dates in a row. Um, it's just a series of events I think it's really important to choose your venues um, and the cities where you're going to play or, or, or towns now there's two ways in my mind that you can do this the first is to find out where your fans are so how we spoke about yes. earlier so even your your analytics analytics um, and find out where you've got fans and perform where they are but the other way of doing it if you really are at the start of your journey or um, you don't know you, yeah. you don't know those analytics is to team up with someone or, or some place who um will bring in a crowd for you yeah like a regular night in that town yeah um, a, um, a promoter who's already doing things or um, in that place so a, a, a venue that perhaps has got a reputation for putting on great music so people are still going to come not knowing who you are as an artist because they know that you're going to yes. put on a great event and I straight away Bianca think about the date that we did in Wales yes so in a tiny town that neither of us had ever been I can't Gosh. even remember how to pronounce it I know I can't I mean it's, you, it's you think if you read it you wouldn't even been able, be able to pronounce it so yeah <laughs> and I have to say as we got closer and closer and came round the corner and oh it just gosh. looked like we were going into an industrial space it was the middle of nowhere and the, it, it was it was literally like a movie we're driving and then you get into the town and then there's thick fog and you can't even see where you're going I'm like no 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 I'm I'm going to be if I'm there I'm be at home I'm not going out in this weather and then you turn and you get to the end of nowhere but you turn into this industrial like estate and like Mm. but then we saw this like calf sort of restaurant place like a beacon all lit up and it's so beautiful like okay maybe maybe just maybe this is going to be a good night 
and it was it was an absolutely brilliant night and not only was it a beautiful venue um but they they really knew who they were as a venue so they'd catered to it um they'd done so well on pr yeah it was packed it was absolutely packed invited the whole town (laughs) everyone came out and it was such a great night everyone was fully engaged um, loved the music and it just was one of the best nights of it the was, tour, wasn't it was it? well I think it was the best night of the tour yeah. and you and we you couldn't have predicted that yeah at, at, at all and the only the only reason I knew um that that would be a success is because I'd taken a chance on that venue um the year before with a different artist who again it was through a friend of mine who I knew worked with um this um cafe and restaurant and um it was very um they'd done very well in terms of the the cafe and restaurant and then they wanted to move into live music Music and she'd asked me if I knew any artists so I'd basically booked um, my artist to perform there on their opening thing and I was amazed at how well they did their PR and again it was packed out so because of that um, I was happy to for Bianca's tour book there again so again if you if you know somebody in a town who can bring a crowd and it, you could you know a smaller way of doing it if you really don't know any of those things is to do a house gig tour which is what Abby Morrow and Alice did they kind of split their their yes. tour into a mixture of house gigs because the person in the at house would invite their friends and they would have like be nice and cozy in there they'll pack out that living room um and then they they also approached cafes and and venues as well so it was a mixture so it kind of took the pressure off in a way mm. um just asked asking somebody to give up their home and invite their friends um for it for a night and i i would love to do that in my house you know i'm gonna have some music invite my friends and be, you know i feel quite cool so um there is that way to do it as well which yeah. is which is easier i think it's choosing venues as well that suit your music yeah. so if you've got like intimate acoustic vibes of your music then a house gig tour might work really well for you or a coffee coffee shop shop tour tour. bookshop tour yeah and even if your music isn't that way but if there's a way because financially you know especially if you're at the beginning of your uh, early on in your journey you might need to strip that back reinterpreting your music and that can actually be a good challenge for yourself but actually your people that you know or even fans in different territories can have a new experience um of your music so you can be creative with the way that you do something and make it an, an exciting prospect for all the people that are going to be in part of that. Mm-hmm. So that's that's a great thing to do is just to basically start small and each time you you tour, then you can just get that little bit bigger. Yeah. Um, you can perhaps go back to the same cities but up scale your, your venue a little bit more. Um, another great way of booking a tour is through Sofa Sounds mm-hmm. who are just a brilliant uh, initiative who... Uh, put on live events for music lovers all over the world all over the world now yeah so the great thing about sofa sounds is um they have a policy that they're for music love the reason they started it because they were so sick of going to gigs where it was all noisy and people were talking over the music so they're curated by music lovers for music lovers so if you perform at one of their events you know that people are going to listen and engage with your music so most likely if they do like it they will become a fan so even if there's 20 people in the room it's so worth yeah. doing that at the end of the, uh, the day as well the brilliant thing about Sofa Sounds gigs as well is that they do all the organising yes. so they book the venue you, um, turn they, you turn up and you know you'll have a crowd there because they bring in the crowd people yeah. ab- apply to come and watch so there's so many plus points for doing a Sofa t- uh, Sounds tour you could do it um, in your local area but also as we said they're worldwide as well so I actually booked a Sofa Sounds uh, US tour for Joshua Luke Smith and I'd never done anything like that before. And it did take a lot of organisation and, and back in, um, to and fro in, um, mainly to try and get the our schedule of travelling mm. along with when the events are on. So they do, they're, they're run locally by local volunteers and they will often months in advance know when their events are. So you do need to book really early, get in touch with them really early. Um, but it's well worth doing. They're really supportive of independent artists. They are, and they pay. You get yeah. you know, some expenses back as well. Um, so it's a great way to do that. So if you're not sort of a part of the so far family, it's well worth applying um, and sending your music off and just becoming a part of what they do for when you do want to schedule a tour or just a, a run, run of gigs. And if you don't get through the first time, just keep applying um, when you have new music. Yeah. 
Um, and then just to say, I guess for you know we've, talk, we've we've talked about people at the very very beginning of the journey, sort of medium kind of tours journey, and then when you get that bit bigger, when you know you have got a pretty broad um, fan base, I would advise you to just um, do a small tour, mm. um, but you know the bigger venues. So for example, last year we did a tour with Governor B where we literally did three cities. So mm. we did London, Birmingham, and Manchester, and it was a, a bit of a gamble in that we we chose quite big venues. Um, but rather than having eight cities where we had to do that we just picked three to really focus on and although it was still quite stressful leading up to it the amazing thing is they did sell out and it was uh, amazing to do that and in actually in having just those three dates spread over the country but just those three it made a real buzz about it and in particular um don't worry about ticket sales um because everyone's last minute everyone's that's last one minute. thing it's I just like want to say palpitations <laughs> all the way to the gig is anyone coming is anyone coming is anyone coming you just got to <laughs> crack on of your promo find good not annoying ways of promoting what you're doing and just be consistent with that and trust that it'll be fine and it will be it will be and often if you've got a few dates if the first date is really successful and you get lots of people to share on social media and you do um, if people are still thinking about oh, what, what shall I go to the next one it can often tip it over mm. so uh, with Governor B's one he did sold out the London show but not the other two but uh, almost immediately after the London show when all the videos and things were put up online suddenly we had this big surge of ticket sales so that really helps like actually perform is promotion for yes. your next performance yes. in itself but um, um, conversely when we did my tour the first date I think the venue wasn't the best and um, they didn't really promote very well and it was hard for us to promote in that city because I'd never been there so mm. I was going somewhere that I'd never been it wasn't that pat- packed out um, in terms of ticket sales beforehand we had a lot of people walk in they were hearing the music and they came in so actually I wasn't performing to an empty room there was quite a few people in the room Um but when I got when I got there and I realised that's what that's what the situation was, um, I just switched my thinking to I'm chalking this down to experience and I am gonna just do my best to what, whoever's in this room, and so it's it's really just taking a hold of the whole experience of touring and knowing that this is working to your advantage in one way or another. Yeah. Um, and just loving the process. Yeah, seeing every gig as a as a uh, experience yeah. and, and a good experience, something to learn um, for your journey, really. Yeah. Just a quick reminder that we have a growing library of really useful videos on our YouTube page, including interviews with artists and music industry insiders sharing their experience and expertise. Search IMA on YouTube or visit our website www.iama.co.uk. Budgeting. Budgeting is a big one. Tools can be really expensive and yeah. you can even do, you know, you, you start off by going, oh, well, there's the venue and there's um, the travel, but then there's all these things that you hadn't thought of. Yeah. Like sometimes you need to make sure that you've got insurance for the venues and then forgetting that you need to eat. And then do you need accommodation or are you close enough to be able to come home and all of these things? And if so, you do have a bit of a band vibes then it's, then it's you times, you know, two, three, four people to... Pay, yeah, fund and eat and shelter and all that stuff. Um, servicing your instruments if you need to do that. Um, yeah, it's a lot. So d- basically, you just need to make sure you do a budget before you head out. A comprehensive budget. budget. So before you even start booking venues, then try and have uh, a, some kind of spreadsheet with what you project the costs to be where you could see some earning potential as well so so we put together a spreadsheet where we had the the costs that we knew about so if there was a a venue hire some of them were were free entry so it wasn't a a venue hire but others that where there were uh, and if we were going to sell tickets how many tickets we thought we could realistically uh, sell obviously if you sell more than you think that's going to be a bonus as well paying a support act yep of course we we um, paid local support acts as well and in fact that might be a 
good point to just speak about um, in terms of if you're doing a tour in a city you've not been mm. before a really good tip is to look for a local support act who might have their own following yes. so they will bring a bit of a crowd yes. to you to help to fill out the venue but also for them to particularly uh, for their fans to engage and discover you yes. so pick one that uh, um, a support act that complements your music but that has got a local yeah following. they're doing their thing quite well in their area mm-hmm. yeah that's what we did but yeah, but back to the budgeting, just try and think about every conceivable cost you've got and then add a little bit of yes. contingency as well because there will always be something that goes wrong or <laughs> something that breaks down yeah. or something that you hadn't thought of. That You have to that stump up that money for your merch um, initially. Um, yes. So actually be quite strategic with your merch um, and do a bit of research on what you think would be the best merch. But just know that you will have to like, pay for that obviously in advance and hope that you will recoup that after the tour yeah but it is possible to earn money through touring um if you can get the ticket sales up and that's why it's important to choose venues that are appropriate to where you are on your journey yeah. so not overbooking yeah. not booking a 200 seater venue if you've yeah. never played somewhere and you think you can only get 25 people yeah. being it's better, realistic yeah. it's better to pack out a small place yeah. you know it, it totally is and then you'll go back again and you'll have a, a, a bit bigger place and you, you know what i mean just mm-hmm. just pro- be progressive with it um and obviously booking um, places where you know you've got friends where you might be able to stay there for free yes, that's what um, we, we that can that, really yeah. help yeah. Um, sharing the cost of travel mm. if you're touring with someone else and um, Alison Abimaro can talk to us about that as well yes. and how they kept some of their costs down and, and, and went about um, booking <laughs> So how did we book the tour? So we worked well, we kind of did quite different things. We kind of used a a mixture of our contacts um, and people that we knew in different places, in cool places. Mm -hmm. And also, um, we also just did some kind of blank emailing um, and calling, to be honest. And it was kind of a mixture of those two things. Yeah, we Um, just kind of hit all our contacts in all the areas where we wanted to go. And, yeah, we did some cold contacting in some venues that we wanted to go to. Yeah. And um, put it all out there and, and then waited to see what came back, really. Yeah. And we got a great response, didn't we? We got a really good response. And I think one of the main things was we kind of... Because I, I was coming with my contact kind of list and Alice come with her contact list, it was really interesting when we, we basically just listed... Like we spent a couple hours listing everyone who we thought could could help us or or mm. could do something with us or or, or point us onto someone else, um, and I think we we really wanted to focus on on house gigs. We thought that was probably the best way that we could fill up our tour was with house gigs and venue gigs. Mm. So making it something that was a combination of both, um, so that in a place where we might not have a big following, we could have a contact in um, with a, with like in, in their house in their front room, and they could invite their friends. So kind of basing it on a bit of a so far kind of sounds thing, plus in venues as well. Yeah, and that was great because if we had one contact, yeah, it meant that they brought all their friends and then we were sharing our resources, but also they were helping us and filling the room with guests. So it was perfect, yeah. really. Yeah, we had we actually had a really good um, example of a cold kind of uh, an email where we didn't know anyone at all, and we were capitalising on the fact that we were two women who were um, doing something, touring together, who were supporting each other rather than being in competition. We were both individual artists supporting each other, and we found out about this amazing coffee shop which is run by three women um, in Germany who were just amazing. Like it was, it just sounded like a, a really good fit, and we just contacted them randomly and they were one of our first kind of people overseas to say yeah sure we'd love to have you come to, um, so come come and join us for this gig so that was an example of just looking at what is a USP about what we were doing how does that fit into someone that we don't know but but could kind of jump on board with our vision in our emails to, to people to kind of tell them about the tour which was called shadow sessions um, we basically we, we made sure that we hit on a few things, like our names, what we do, where we're from, and what the point of the tour was, mm. kind of what, why we were doing it, what made us different or unique. Um, and But we kept it quite short and concise, because I hate receiving long emails. Um, so we wanted to 
quick, quite, um, do quite short, and then we put links to our music. I think we put links to actually maybe one song. I think we chose kind of our best song each, and we put a link to that, um, and then we attached a press release to it as well. So we attached a, a longer document with more detail. Someone wanted to kind of be like, okay, let me find out a little bit more about these guys. With photos, so the press release had a photo of each of us as well that they could use if they wanted. <laughs> But how about when to tour? Is there a right time? Abby Mara and Alice also have some great stuff to say on this. If you're trying to think about the best time to tour, I would think that you should definitely have material yeah. to, to tour with and also recorded material that you can sell. I mean, for us as independent artists, we needed to sell the music to be able to fund the tour. So I think it's really important that you have recorded material um, in the bag already that you can go out and debut and sell also. I think that's one key thing that you should have already. Definitely, yeah, I agree with that. I think the right time to tour is when you're trying to promote something or when you've got something that's coming um, maybe after the tour that you really want to direct people to as well. So I think it, it should be something that um, creates... That all that work that you're putting in is, is not just like a drop in the ocean and then that's it, but actually there's a momentum, there's, there's other things that come alongside it, and I think definitely for us, um, releasing... So I was, I was um, launching um, an EP, and so that was a big thing for me, um, to be able to tell people about, to, to gain more of a following. Um, and for Alice as well, with her album, re-releasing her album, that was a big thing. And I think if we didn't have that, we might have felt a little bit like, what, why? Why are we doing this? Mm. Because it takes so much work um, to do it. It's really good just for, for, for building a fan base, but I think you need more than that. I think you need to be able to then say to that fan base, look what I've got as well, and join me and follow me and become part of um, uh, yeah, my fan base. And also, if you're going to pick up local PR, you need something new and fresh. And so we managed to get yeah. radio play in Germany. Yeah. And it's because we had something to talk about. We had these new um, albums and records to talk about. So I think if you're going to get interest from local venues, but also especially PR and radio, you need something fresh to talk about. So new material is key. I think it's also really good to use what you have. Um, and when you're touring, and not to think that you have to be able to sell out massive venues, and that's the way I'm going to tour. We managed to do 20 dates, I think it was, or maybe it was eight, actually, I think it was 18, 18, in the end, 18 yeah. dates that we did across the UK um, and Germany. We did four in Germany and 18 in the UK. Um, and we managed that not because, I mean, we don't have, you know, we didn't have a fan base, don't have a fan base in like Manchester or, you know, places like that. It was it was actually because we used what we had, which was um, what we, we really believed in what we were doing. We thought it was good quality and we really wanted people to to, to hear it and to see what we were doing. Um, and, and so we approached people and got on board people who believed in it as well. So regardless of where you're at, um, you know, have a go. <laughs> and also, <laughs> if it's a coffee shop gig or if it's a living room gig, you don't have to have a huge fan base because essentially your contact is bringing the people into the room. So I think that's a really good way to play it as well, just to yeah. get, get the host to bring the people and then you don't have to worry about, oh, I haven't got a huge fan base in Manchester, but, but your friends have them, so um, that's a good way to play. So when you feel ready to, the next step is to get on an aeroplane or a boat or however way you travel across the waters <laughs> and um, see about sort of extending your reach to another territory and touring there. I think it's one of the most exciting things that an artist can do because yeah. sometimes you you can sort of imagine people in your hometown listening but when you realise wow there's people in other parts of the world who enjoy my music and again going back to Spotify that yes, is a great way looking that. at your analytics to find out that there's other countries where people are listening to your music um, and yeah it might be a random country you'd never thought of but if you've got a significant fan base there then it's a good idea to, to book doing a gig there why not you know engage with those fans um we spoke briefly earlier about sofa sounds they're worldwide now so yes. you can do some gigs through them and again pick cities where you've got fans um you can all, perhaps do one sofa sounds and one outside uh, of you know the one that you put on yourself uh, and again you can still book very small um one of the things i've done as well is linking up with um fans in another country so 
um, fairly recently when we did a, a tour with Joshua Luke Smith and we put out on Instagram, hey, we'd love to come to Germany. Would somebody like to host a gig? And a guy got in touch and said, I'm a really big fan. I'd love to put on a gig in Berlin. So he did. He uh, I liaised with him, but he was the one who looked out a venue for me, looked out a support act. And um, he had a, a big group of friends um, who basically came and support it as well. That's awesome. And it was really good. So again, think about that. If, if uh, look hook up with fans who will want to help you and yeah. they might be if you don't know what Berlin's like what what a good venue would be maybe there's a fan there who would be um you know you still do all the pain for the things but they would do scout it out for you and, yeah. and people want to do that yeah. they find that exciting to be involved yeah. with yeah I think it just takes a bit of bravery um to so, um, approach people that you don't know or to put yourself out there in another territory and even just approaching like doing that research of that city looking at all the music spots and you know sending out an email um, a concise well worded email I think Abby Morrow and Alice we spoke to them about that so we will we'll likely insert that in a, in a little while but just even cold calling and and seeing what comes back because people want like venues coffee shops restaurants they want people to come in and eat their food or, or use their venue and if you are going to help that to happen um, it's a win for everyone so um, just being brave to contact people you've never spoken about and be okay with the rejection just keep going is 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 a good way to get in in another country I think the biggest thing to think about when um, touring abroad is just the cost is often the cost yes. to get there I mean for us living in the UK to get to Europe can sometimes be just as cheap because we've got low budget airlines so actually that's okay um but again you might want to see if you've got friends who live abroad who would be willing to host a gig um Airbnb can make things quite cheap in terms of accommodation as well so it doesn't have to be extortionate if you're already going to be going somewhere for example on a holiday or some kind of work trip um, where a flight's already paid for to somewhere perhaps further afield think about how you could make a tour out of that so yeah. I knew some other artists who were going anyway and they, they'd put a holiday on the end and turned that into a tour mm-hmm. so again think of ways of how you can keep um, the budget down by tying in things. Yeah and a, and a good way to do it as you, you've heard from um, Abby Mara and Alice is to team up with another artist yeah. and share the load of organising it the budgeting costs um, even just the pre- pressure of um, promoting and even worrying about whether anyone's going to come it's better when there's two people even if you've got two bands you know that's a really good night that you you know two bands going on tour you kind of get down to your smallest you know number of you on 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 in each band and actually planning that all together that could be quite a fun and exciting way and actually quite a um, great prospect for um, a venue to know that actually there's going to be two bands coming and they can get a a great um, support band or act and that's like a really good night so share and consider sharing a tour um with friend or with fellow artist yeah, that's a great tip. And, and also, you know, it can be quite lonely on the road. Yes. Um, you know, it, it, we've, we've got a video on, on mental health and artists and touring's a weird thing yeah. to do. Like uh, if you're at the level where you're touring a lot and you're away, it's, a, it's a, an exciting thing, but it's also a weird lifestyle when you're away from home, away yeah. from normality. So I think um, making sure who is with you when you travel is really important as well. Making so sure that you have um, an understanding amongst your team. You work it out after a few days, but who needs space when and, and, you know, being tired and all of those things. But they're all things to think about when it comes to touring as well. You know, we we never want to neglect that side of it um, in Mm. terms of mental health, because I think with touring, that is one of the most... It potentially one of the the most stressful things if it's long term for yeah. artists and um, the effects it can have on your relationships and family and things like that and whether you can afford the time away. So all of those are things to think about before and just try and just let yourself think about them so it's not a surprise when it comes. Yeah. That, although what, it's exciting, yeah. there will, will be parts of it that are, are yeah. difficult. And kind of plan out what sort of strategy you'll have if you kind of hit a bit of a low. Who would you call? Have somebody that, you know... That's that's that knows that maybe you're going to come contact them or just how are you going to um, um, practice that self care? Um, another way to tour is actually to get on a support tour and somebody else who's a, who's touring um, to reach out to them and say that you would love to be their support act. You'll take care of yourself. Um, you'll book all your own flights or 
in you know sort out your travel and your accommodation um but you you would love to be a part of that yeah. um that is a way to um introduce yourself to this person's fans um and this person's support and um to visit new territories and make um make new fans yourself and I think it, you just need to be um, quite um, selective and strategic in who yes. you choose. So choose an artist who you know your music is going to yes. complement them. And stand so out. it makes yeah. sense to them to choose you, mm-hmm. but also so that their fans are likely to become fans right. of your music. That's the payoff mm-hmm. for you, that you're, you're gain their fans as well. And also the trick, I think, to start with, with in terms of a support tour is to choose an artist that's bigger than you, but not so huge that they've already got a label telling them who needs to be on their support mm-hmm. so perhaps finding another independent artist but who's doing really really well and who you admire uh, that way you can get in touch with the artist directly or their manager rather than having to go through labels and, yes. and, and things like that that's uh, just in terms of realistically getting a support tour that's one of the ways of being able to do it yeah that's so good and that's what we've got to say about touring at the moment I mean there's it's one of those things that you you learn on the job for the most part and there's no nothing like experience and it is just a whole experience and you will learn so much and you'll grow so much and, and your have some music, very funny stories so <laughs> many funny stories your music may even um um change and develop because of this live experience um there isn't very many downsides to it it is hard um it is it is a bit of a slog it can be expensive but for your career there's it's only good things really that touring touring will bring so for your next release for your you know when you're planning for next year or this year like find ways to see how you can incorporate touring you can tour in your town like we can you could do we could do a london tour and go to different areas and a big run of dates and and do that you can you can do a tour of your country um just just find ways to incorporate that and see how you go and we'd love to hear your stories if you want to hit us up with you know a a comment on our social medias or on social media or um email us a message we'd love to hear how touring has helped you in your experience yeah just budget well plan well and start small and get out there and enjoy it yay see you again next time guys for more great content from i emma Find us on social media at We Are IMA. Check out our Spotify playlist for new music from independent artists. Search We Love Independent Music. And don't forget to sign up to our mailing list where you'll receive a free 10 day guide especially designed to inspire and equip independent music artists with some really useful, practical, and inspirational resources. Sign up at www.ima.co.uk.